The history of the holidays goes back a long way and spans many cultures, some of which you might not know. Sometimes called the most wonderful time of the year, the holidays can be magical, full of beautiful lights, decorations, joyful music, and plenty of food. Most people go through the motions, however, putting up Christmas trees or following family traditions without knowing where any of it came from. It's easy to be sucked into tradition without thinking. I'm pretty sure, though, you've wondered about the history of the holiday season. Where did these holidays come from? Why do people celebrate all these different holidays like Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, and winter solstice? For instance, I still think it's a little odd that we put an evergreen tree in my living room. Actually, I don't. I'm just <laughs> saying what the teleprompter tells me to. Well, you might be surprised how far back some of these traditions go. Uh-oh. I'm Mike with List 25. <laughs> Keep going. And allow me to shed a little light on the holiday season for you with the history of the holidays you might not know. Roll theme song. Ten, the winter solstice of old. Celebrating winter solstice has been around for quite a long time. It marks the shortest day on the calendar year and also the beginning of having new light for the coming year since the days grow longer. Ancient cultures like Germanic and Scandinavian celebrated winter solstice by lighting fires and yule logs to signify new life and welcoming new light. Nine, modern winter solstice. Today, cultures all over the world celebrate winter solstice differently. Modern Druidic practices celebrate the death of the old sun and the birth of the new sun, usually at the site of Stonehenge, where the sun perfectly aligns with the stones. Sounds awesome. In Austria, Krampus appears to scare little children, and in Japan, <laughs> people take it easy and have a nice hot bath to protect themselves from the cold. That escalated That's... and then it went down real quick. <laughs> Eight. Hanukkah's Turbulent Beginnings Starting around the 2nd century BCE, this Jewish holiday had explosive origins. It all started with the Maccabean Revolt against... Antiochus IV Epiphanes, the Greco-Syrian king at the time. Thank you. He marched his armies into Jerusalem and massacred thousands before building a statue of Zeus inside the second temple and sacrificing pigs within its holy walls. <laughs> On top of that, he forced the Jews to worship Greek gods. Outraged and defiant, the Jewish priest Mattathias, wow, with his five sons, led a revolt which became a full rebellion. I'm Teleprompters Jewish. are fun. Seven, the Jewish festival of lights. When Mattathias died, his son Judah Maccabee took over in 166 BC. He was known as the Hammer and while using guerrilla warfare tactics, led several successful campaigns against the tyrannical king, driving them out of Jerusalem. He ordered the second temple to be cleansed, the altar be rebuilt, and the menorah to be lit. At the time, they only had enough olive oil to keep the lights burning for a single day. But for eight consecutive days, the lights continued to burn. Considered a miracle, Jewish tradition started an eight-day festival of lights, commemorating the events known as Hanukkah. Six. A modern Hanukkah interpretation. Today, modern historians think the origins of Hanukkah might have looked differently than tradition tells us. Some believe at the time of Antiochus IV, Jerusalem fell into civil war between the Jews that assimilated to Greek culture and the traditionalist Jews that refused. The real battle was between two factions of Jews rather than against Anna Antiochus IV. Ah, these names are hard. It also maintained by Jewish scholars that Hanukkah might be belated celebration of Sukkot. 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 One of their most important holidays consisting of seven days of fasting and prayer. And I deeply apologize. I'm not good with pronunciations and I'm also not Jewish. On behalf so. of all Jews, it's okay. Thank you. You're welcome. See, tis the season of love and care. And Jewish words. Great. <laughs> Five. Kwanzaa, a modern secular holiday invented in 1966 by Dr. Malana Karenga, its focus was to bring African Americans together through their common heritage and cultural practices in Africa. The name comes from the phrase Mandunda Ya Kwanzaa. Nope, that's Matunda. Mantunda Ya Kwanzaa. Matunda. Meaning first Matunda fruits and Swahili. Karenga studied many African harvest festivals from Ashanti to Zulu and combined them for Kwanzaa. It also includes candelabra for its celebrations. 
Each night, the family gathers and has a child light a candle while reading one of the seven principles formed by Karanga. African, African drums, drum. dancing, storytelling, and a large meal is also common in the celebrations. I thought that was a comma. Well, That's it my wasn't. Fault. I know we're messing up on, well, I'm messing up on this pronunciations, but I'm actually finding all of this fascinating, and I hope that I'm being accepted by you, the viewers. Hey, <laughs> accepted by the Jewish committee. <laughs> Four. Saturnalia. A dead, ancient pagan Roman celebration in December, Saturnalia was a festival celebrating and worshipping their agricultural god, Saturn. At first, the ancient Romans only celebrated it on one day, but it became so popular, they expanded the holiday for a whole week. During this time, everything came to a screeching halt. People took off work and had big parties, gambled, sang, played games, decorated their homes with wreaths and other things, and gave each other gifts. They also heavily decorated fir trees in the Temple of Saturn as a symbol of fertility. Fertility. Nice. Thanks. That was a pun. It was funnier the first time. Yeah, we screwed up. <laughs> Three. Early years of Christmas. The early Christian church from the first century CE up to around the fourth century CE didn't celebrate Jesus' birth. The Gospels don't provide a specific date, so Pope Julius I decided December 25th. Some think this was a way to convince pagans celebrating Saturnalia to adopt Christianity. Originally, they called it the Feast of the Nativity. The name Christmas came later from the Middle English word Christmasa, which just means Christ's Mass. It became wildly popular across Christendom and by the Middle Ages had replaced Saturnalia. As a result, many early pagan traditions bled into Christmas traditions, including Christmas trees. I do love decorating a good Christmas tree. I've never done it. Mine's fake. Well, that is because you you don't celebrate Christmas. That'll do it. Yeah. Every year, people tell me to have a Merry Christmas or ask me if I've done my Christmas shopping. Have you? No. Never. Oh, no. I do fun fact. You know what? I'll do it at the next one. I'll tell you a fun fact about Christmas shopping. What did you get me for Hanukkah? Um, worst Hanukkah ever. Two. The first war on Christmas. Today, when Christmas comes around, it doesn't take long before hearing the term the war on Christmas in the media, especially in America, over the secularization of Christmas. However, the first war on Christmas actually came from a Christian religious sect, the Puritans. In an attempt to curb cultural decline, Oliver Cromwell and the Puritans took over England in 1645 and canceled Christmas. No. Meanwhile, in America, Christmas wasn't celebrated at all, with many Puritans believing it wasn't necessary. Eventually, the holiday was outlawed in Boston, and anyone who celebrated it was fined five shillings. I don't have five shillings. Well, you better not celebrate Christmas, then. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Christmas is banned. One, Christmas reinvented. Before the 19th century, people celebrated Christmas like party animals, engorging themselves on food and getting seriously drunk. It wasn't exactly a wholesome family holiday. All that changed, however, thanks to Washington Irving's The Sketchbook of Jeffrey Cran and Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. Their stories focused heavily on peace, goodwill, generosity, and family coming together in harmony. Since both works were wildly popular in the United States and England, Christmas traditions changed towards family and eventually became mainstream. Eventually, the United States declared it an official holiday on June 26th, 1870. So, what's your favorite holiday? Let us know in the comments below. Or tweet your answer to us at list25. You know, when I read that <clears throat> it all changed, it was really tempting to say when the Fire Nation attacked. <laughs> it, it was. Also that. You've been anxiously waiting all weekend, and now your wait is over. This year, in honor of the holiday season, we've arranged a little contest for you we'd like to call Listmas. You've heard of the 12 Days of Christmas, and while we could have easily presented you with a list on the 12 Days of Christmas, we figured you'd rather enjoy 12 days of our typical awesomeness with the chance to win money at the end. Did I say money? <laughs> yeah, actual money. 
in the form of gift cards. What you need to do in order to win this listacular holiday gift is simply pay attention to our videos each day from here until Christmas. During each Listmas special, we'll include a holiday themed Easter egg, even though it's Christmas. <laughs> Keep track of them, and on Christmas Day, be the first to tweet us at List25 with all 12 Easter eggs. It's really that simple. Merry Listmas. Happy Listmas? Merry Listmas. Listma Merry Listmas. Nice. Listy Listmas. That sounds like a disease. He's still wearing the shirt. <laughs> Enjoying our lists? Be sure to click that subscribe button on the bottom right and the notification bell so you don't miss out on new ones every Monday through Friday. Share them with your friends and help us consistently conciliate curiosity. And if you want even more lists, check out these videos here or just head to our website at list25.com. While you're there, make sure to join our newsletter for exclusive lists, prizes, and so much more. You really don't want to miss out on this.